Hello everybody and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F16C Viper for DCS World and today we're going to be wrapping up the Data Link 16. Um, now real quick, in the previous video I had fumbled around wondering why I switched to TWS saying, oh I didn't need to do that. I don't know what the heck, like my brain short circuit or something. I went to TWS for a reason. All radar contacts on the uh, radar scope will show as uncorrelated while in range while search. You must switch to TWS in order to see them actually become correlated contacts as, it be as TWS provides more precise information. Okay, so th that's exactly why I did it. It was exactly what I needed to do, and I don't know why I said I didn't need to do it. So, anyway... I had a brain fart. I'm allowed to have a brain fart. Your brain farts. My brain farts. They both smell just as bad. So, yeah, suck up and deal. Um, the last thing I want to point out um, is that uh, to my DCS followers, guys, um, I'm sure by this point you're realizing that multiple videos just released back to back to back. Um, I had... Uh, quite a few recorded i just hadn't had them rendered and in the process of recording this last one uh, my cpu started overheating and through my almost 20 years of building computers um, i learned a uh, incredible um, process that needs to be done in order to maintain uh, proper cooling um, you guys aren't going to believe this, but it, no matter if you're using air cooling, water cooling, you know, your fans, your radiators, whatever, bear with me for a second because it's going to sound crazy. Occasionally, you have to clean them. I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not. Um, you know, you, you can't just clean out all the components inside. You do have to clean the fans because what, uh, some crazy thing that happens is that dust builds up on the edge of the fans. They then stop pushing air the, the way they should as efficiently. That dust then starts getting tossed into the radiator. The radiator starts clogging up. And get this, it will stop cooling the water in the radiator and it actually warms up your CPU. I know. I'm, I'm sure you guys are jumping out of your seats right now going, nah, he's full of crap. I swear, this is through an uh, incredible amount of testing. I'm, I'm probably going to write a book or something about it, but anyways. So, yeah. Stupid moment. Lazy moment. I can't believe I let it get that bad. I was short of a same, sort of ashamed of myself, but anyway, I promise the DCS content is absolutely being worked on just as much as everything else, so don't think that I'm leaving you guys behind. Alright, so uh, I just hit something I didn't want to hit. Mm, let's do that okay where's my autopilot are we still on we're still on okay so now let's get after the data link pod now that you guys have heard my stupid moment for the day um i'm gonna go ahead and just put us into an active pause we're not too concerned about where other aircraft are today i'm gonna go ahead and zoom us in on the iff or on the iff on the icp and the ded control panel here all right let's go ahead and lock us down there okay so First thing that we're going to want to do if we want to see the menu for the um, data link is we're going to go to list. And you can see it says E for data link. That's your enter button. So the first screen um, gives us some reference. There's really no need to change almost anything in this. Um, there, there's a few things that you may want to change here and there, you know, based on, you know, how big your, your flight group is and, you know, changes that may transpire. But, you know, we'll go through everything as, as I have information for it. This is your GPS reference time on or off setting. Um, this is the pilot enter time um, if you want to do so. Now, I think we can actually set, let's see if we can set a local time. Uh, no, not letting us. Okay, huh, interesting. All right, um, I'll look into that and see if there's a way to set it because, and the reason why I'm saying that is I think it would be kind of cool if we can set a local time, especially to VR players, people who can't see, you know, the, the clocks and things around them. It'd be kind of cool to know what time it is. <laughs> Anyways, assuming that it's accurate. Uh, you have your network time reference. This is on or off. Um, network, I would assume that's for the data link and whatever data link is set up in the network, which I would imagine would most likely be in Zulu. Um, and then you have your net, uh, network synchronization. So basically, just like the alignment, we have quality status updates. Um, it's the same principle for the network, you know, how, how solid is the network uh, synced up with each other? You know, is there any degradation, things like that? All right, let's go ahead and do a uh, dauber right for the sequence page and go to page two here. Now brings us to the MIDS communication uh, channels for the uh, secure network. So one of the cool things about the Datalink 16 network is that we also have secure radio communications. Now I don't know if they're all implemented right now. Um, I don't know if any are implemented. I have to do some research on that. I've, I've never been in a situation to use one, especially as we, um, you know, my team and I, we use... Um, 
what's the word I'm thinking of, guys? Uh, simple radio. So, but I mean, still kind of cool. So, break it down. You have the fighter channel, the uh, mission channel, and then you have your surveillance channel. Okay, and so I imagine your fighter channel is going to be all your fighters talking to each other. Missions probably going to be your mission commanders, um, uh, more like the guard, and then obviously your surveillance channel is going to be your AWACS, ground radar sources, things like that. Okay, now this thing here, uh, we talked about it briefly um, over here on the uh, radar scope. If you are ever seeing a radar contact over here, that's in red, and you see, for example, maybe ED11 above it or FD13 or something like that, that is the call sign and flight number. So this would be Enfield 11, Ford 11, Dodge, etc. So that's what you're seeing when you see that above a contact. And what that is, is identifying that, for example, if you saw FD11 above a contact, it means Ford 11 has that contact locked up. And it's just a, uh, another way to get some more situational awareness and letting you know that one of your flight members um, or another, I should say, coalition member has that particular aircraft locked up. Okay, so it keeps you from locking up the same target if you're trying to avoid doing so. All right, now there's situations where obviously you would want to lock up the same target maybe for redundancy. You know, if you're doing a shoot and wave off and the second flight comes in for the kill if you need be. Anyway, things like that. So, um, that can be changed. You can come over here. First, you can change the flight number. And then you can also change your call sign number. Um, and uh, so that's, that's pretty handy, you know, if, if you change your flight lead position or anything like that. So, let's say you're the flight lead. And, um, or better yet, I guess a more accurate, let's say you're not the flight lead. Let's say you're, you're flight two, right? And flight one gets knocked out for whatever reason, you know, shot down, whatever it may be. You can come down here. And so it's two for no, one for yes. So you would come in here as flight two, change this to number one, and you would now show up on your HSD or others HSD as the flight lead for that particular wing or that group. All right. And then they transmit uh, frequency set to high. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over one more. Now, these are all the flight numbers that are currently a part of the Link 16 station that you're currently on. Okay, so you can identify them as 201, 202, etc. And then you have your own flight here. Okay, and uh, the own flight, it actually tells you what your flight position is. All right, so in this case, mine is flight one. I am, um, you know, the flight lead. Again, this is another situation where if you, you were in a different position and you lost your flight leave for whatever reason, you would come in here and change it to flight one. So that way the rest of the network knows you are now the lead aircraft, right? So anyway, um, really not a whole lot to that one. Um, just figured I would uh, cover it for the, uh, the sake of, of, you know, um, being as, as thorough as I can without, you know, giving so much information that it confuses everybody. Um, but we have, um, pretty much covered everything that I can think of to cover for you guys. If there's any other questions or anything else that you guys want to know, by all means, uh, reach out to me and, and let me know what else I need to go over for the Link 16. I am not as familiar with it as some of the other services in the aircraft, um, and whether it be this uh, aircraft or even the Hornet. Um, so by all means, guys, um, if, if I've missed something or misspoken on something, as always, let me know. I do not take offense to it, okay? Um, you know, I, I, I value the information. Um, and let's see here. I think um, what we could talk about here is the filters for the FCR page, which would be kind of fun. So let's go ahead and jump over there real quick, and we'll talk about that as well. Let me move on over here. Over her. Let me lock that up, bring that in. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about here is some of the filter options that are available um, on the FCR page, but we're going to use something a little bit different to do so. I'm actually going to unpause for a second before I get ahead of myself and what we're looking for. Hang on a second. My camera's going to be a little goofy for a second, guys. i got to back out a bit, see if I can find it for you. It's hard to see. I don't want to pull the throttle back if I can avoid it, but it looks like I'm going to have to pull the throttle back. Uh, where are you? <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, you guys are about to find out why, but I'm really stupid. <laughs> so the, the, the knob I'm looking for is right there on the throttle that I'm moving around. <laughs> 
Anyways, um, so what we're looking for is the transmit switch for the UHF VHF transmit button. Ah, oh, that's a blooper moment. Oh, I'm retarded. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I really checked myself up with that one. Uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, you're screwed, right? All right, so let's go to the controls for a second and let me check something here. Uh, escape, just controls. UHF transmit switch. All right, so interestingly enough, ah, there we are. These are the two that we're interested in, okay? So you have your transmit switch IFF in and IFF out by um, doing depressions on these guys for, you guys hear that? These guys, um, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've had way too much monster today. Um, the different depression times, so less than half a second on the outboard switch and less than half a second on the inboard switch rotates between the the different filter options and we're going to go through those for a second but first i got to figure out a mapping for this so let me think for a minute you know what we could use let's use this for today and then i'll adjust it i'm gonna use my flap switch on the hotess or on the warthog throttle since flaps aren't a necessity in this aircraft so let's do why aren't you letting me do... Oh, because I'm on keyboard. I'm retarded. Gosh, I am on a roll today. There we go. And let's do this for out. Okay. So what I've done here is flaps full um, for the out and flaps auto or retracted um, for the in. Okay. And let's see what we got here now. So... Do, 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 do. Uh, let's go right here so we have three filter options which we can do so all i'm going to do is i'm going to use the uh transmit inboard or iff inboard in um for half a second and that's going to rotate between the three options now you can see right here we're currently set to all okay if i press it once real quick so i'm going to go in and out there we go now we are on ftr which is data link surveillance tracks uh being removed if we do it again Oops, that was too short. There we go. All targets um, or all data link surveillance and PPLI tracks are removed. Okay, so basically we would only see our targets. Okay, and then finally, if we go to forward one more time, it will cycle us back to the uh, current position of all. Okay, so again, we have all FTR plus, which is uh, surveillance tracks are removed, targets, which data link surveillance and PPLI tracks are removed. And then finally, we'll swap back to nut or uh, the uh, first all position. Now, if we do um, IFF out for half a second or less, or less than half a second, we get none. All data link tracks are removed. So if you don't want any data link information on your radar, it's that IFF outboard. And then swapping it again. Now, here's the cool thing. So. Let's go to, let's say we just want FTR plus, okay? And then we go to, uh, we want none. So we're gonna go IFF outboard, okay? If we do IFF outboard again, it goes back to the what the previous filter option was set to. Okay, so it doesn't reset the whole thing. It'll go back to the previously selected filter. And so we go forward, forward to get everything back to the way it was by default. Okay, so again, a um, couple of neat features, tips and tricks, things like that. Um, and I believe that is just for the fire control radar. It is indeed. So all of your information will still be over here on the HSD if you need it. So if you just are looking to clean up your fire control radar, this is a really handy way to do so. Okay. But that is basically it for the IFF, um, or not the IFF, the Data Link 16 um, network and uh, options within inside the cockpit. If you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the fields below. Um, I'm really appreciating all the love and support the channel is getting, guys. Stay with me, my DCS friends. I have not forgot about you. I can't stress it enough that DCS does take a bit longer right now. 
um, to to set everything up and, and get all the information organized in a way that I feel is going to be at least coherent um, and hopefully in an understandable that's kind of a cool shot um, in an understandable uh, way of presentation. All right, guys, I hope you guys are all having a very safe and enjoyable Labor Day. Um, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, folks.